Okay, every time I think a rocket starts, but okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Last talk before the lunch break, and this one is something I'm really excited about because I started my stuff with Hudson Jenkins classical way, so I'm really curious to see how Oleg is going to explain how we can bring Jenkins to the cloud. So I say welcome, Oleg Nenashev, sorry if I said it wrong, with the talk Cloud-Friendly Jenkins. Well, thanks, all. Yeah, uh, so before we start, uh, who has ever had any experience with Jenkins? Most of the people here. Uh, and uh, for many, it was five years ago, 10 years ago, before Cloud Native, Argo, we think. But imagine the irony. Uh, it's just 30 minutes uh, before the lunch, and you cannot go there because uh, there is Jenkins discussion. <laughs> so uh, let's start. Today I'm actually going uh, to talk about cloud-friendly Jenkins. I'm not uh, really going to talk about cloud-native Jenkins or how we can make it cloud-native. Um, and uh, uh, my name is Alek Tinashev. Actually, I spent more than 10 years in developer tools and ecosystem. Uh, I started with Jenkins. Now I'm test containers, YMO uh, co-maintainer. And I also work on many projects. And I've recently joined uh, Gradle to help with developer ecosystem experience and community building. And there is a lot of slides, but you can find slides there. So I won't be spending too much time, uh, and uh, there is quite a lot of uh, background. One thing I want to discuss uh, today is actually that for most of the services, you do not have to be uh, cloud native. Uh, maybe I will be expelled uh, from the CNCF ambassadors programs after that, but I think that cloud friendly is actually enough for the most of the use cases. I spent a lot of time in different communities, and actually among them, uh, none of the projects except Open Feature has ever had to be cloud native, and uh, uh, many of these projects have a lot of uh, relation to the CNCF ecosystem. So what I'm talking today definitely doesn't represent my employer. It doesn't represent uh, the official position of the Jenkins community. We do not have official position on that matter for what it was. Uh, any contributor is welcome to share their opinion. And I'm not representing any vendor there. And another thing, uh, my slides and my information might be dated because I have been on sabbatical uh, in Jenkins uh, since two years ago. And yeah, I plan to be back. So, OK. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the second uh, iteration of this talk. Uh, oh, now it works. Yeah. Have you ever been to Bilbao? Probably you should. Uh, there I present this talk. Uh, uh, first time, and actually, if you meet Barb, he's from Bilbao, he's organizer of CNCF Meetup, and he makes great cookies. So ask Courtney, who can confirm it from the recent experience. And this is a great Meetup to be at, and this is a great city to visit. And uh, yeah, there we discussed Cloud Native Jenkins, uh, there we had quite a lot of uh, discussion uh, um, at uh, beers and pinches, which is again a great uh, uh, thing to do in Bilbao. And one of key takeaways was that actually nobody really um, uh, thinks that Jenkins ha should have been cloud native from the experience. In the Russian language, there is uh, an idiom uh, fly past like a plywood over Paris. Uh, it's not exactly clear what it means, even for a Russian speaker, but uh, you just miss the opportunity. Uh, there is, if I, when I say to, uh, to French people, they do not understand me at all, mostly because of my French, but still. So it's definitely me missing cube cones, and it's definitely Jenkins missing cube cones. I have no idea what happens, so, uh, but yeah. So uh, yeah, Jenkins has been always rejected from cube cones. Uh, we had quite a lot of coordinated applications, and most of the time Jenkins wouldn't be accepted. Uh, same for this talk, but I think that for rejects is actually quite reasonable. So. Yeah, this is what I said in the beginning. Uh, being cloud native uh, friendly is actually a must, and uh, what we want to uh, discuss. So, do you agree with this statement? No. Uh, do you know what cloud native actually means? <laughs> because there are also quite a lot of opinions on that, and uh, today uh, we will. Magic. Uh, yeah, so uh, today we talk uh, specifically about Jenkins and experience, and uh, I will just do a really quick uh, background. <coughs> okay. 
Yeah, I really, uh, I really have no idea. Maybe I should have uh, ch changed uh, to the PDF, but yeah. Uh, I uh, talked on evolution of continuous integration, continuous delivery many times, and uh, every time uh, we talk about different generations. Uh, let me just restart the presentation, maybe it helps. Okay, uh, so yeah, there are multiple generations of CI, CD tools on the market, and of course these gener generations have changed a lot since uh, the last time, because there is a lot of demand uh, on the market like CD, DevOps, now platform engineering, all of them come from different, use different use cases, demands, architecture expectations, the infrastructure changes too. So all the systems operating in CI, CD space have to also change, and uh, yeah. I have no idea. Uh, let, let's try again because there is no animation there, uh, it's just uh, plain slides, but yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Jenkins, as well as other tools like Team CT or Azure DevOps, uh, GitHub Actions have been evolving along uh, the new requirements or the new expectations, and they try to catch up. So some tools die off, some tools continue evolving, uh, everything is okay, and uh, all tools currently try to switch to fifth generation, uh, which is what we normally talk at uh, events like KubeCon. Um, so, for example, in the case of Jenkins, we introduced quite a lot of new features like pipeline as code, configuration as code, there are modern distributions, including Helm charts, separators, and uh, there are public distributions for all the platforms. So, supposedly, we are a uh, match for the modern environments, and supposedly, if you run Kubernetes on uh, Google Cloud, you should experience no issues. Uh, but, of course, it's not exactly true. Because just going to fifth generation doesn't mean adopting the infrastructure and making it possible to run there. It actually also means that adopting the mindset of this infrastructure. So when we talk about uh, fifth generation of tools, usually I say that it's Unix way, but in the cloud. So each tool is a modular, uh, like a microservice or not a microservice, but they uh, achieve a particular goal. And we rely heavily on integrations, on encapsulation of tools. So you put everything in the container. You don't care what technology is used under the hood. You expose open protocols. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, tools inter interact with each other as building blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Generation 5 uh, has a lot of great examples. Of course, it's Argo, Tecton, Dagger, uh, GitHub Actions as open ecosystem is also a fifth generation for me, Flux, Artilius, and many other tools. They evolved in the same way. All of them are great uh, in the area. They do not try to go in another area. Instead of that, they integrate with tools. So there is a lot of uh, open protocols like cloud events, open telemetry, et cetera, that actually address the use case. And for example, if you take Tecton or if you take Dagger, it's just a pipeline engine. It's a commodity, it, but it does this thing well. It might be fully cloud native, it might be adapted, but it's the use case where it focuses on. Um, for Jenkins, the situation was a little bit different because Jenkins itself has been a big framework that included a lot of things. So it was out of the box solution. So if you use GitLab, everything is there. Uh, and it's great. If you use GitHub Actions, everything is also there. But if you need to add something in addition to that, then your problems start. There are plugins, there are actions, uh, there are compatibility issues. And this is what created a lot of issues. At the same time, there are new demands, and we want to transition our infrastructure there. And in Jenkins, our approach was that we want to have a general purpose CI CD engine. So basically, Jenkins as it was. Personally, I call it an automation server, but yeah, this is a statement of the founder of the project uh, that would run on Kubernetes and uh, embrace different architecture, but re retain all the extensibility uh, you had with Jenkins. So this was a statement for cloud native Jenkins project we wanted to build, and of course we clearly understood at this point that it's not just providing Jenkins uh, in a Helm chart. Uh, there is a lot more, and uh, there are there multiple approaches. Mm. So our definition of cloud native was, uh, firstly, uh, providing best service for each need, 
at the same time, it would compl be compliant with CNCF definition, so it would be paper use, it would support infinite scaling and scaling down to zero, so that uh, we could release resources. At the same time, it would release easy to use, easy to maintain, and fast to develop. Well, uh, these are great goals, but uh, any developer could feel some contradiction there, right? Uh, and uh, this is what uh, everyone uh, has to choose, what you prioritize among these goals. And we had a few projects where we tried to do different priorities and got to very useful, uh, quite well working results, but uh, they have not been uh, actually a, a replacement for Jenkins. Uh, what do I even mean here? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, classic Jenkins architecture, so there is Jenkins controller, it has web UI, it has permanent agents, or now it ca can have on-demand agents, so agent part of Jenkins has always been cloud native. The problem for us was actually Jenkins controller. It was heavy, it uh, included basically uh, all the backend part, uh, all the storage interaction, also front-end, uh, plugin engine, and it ha had a pipeline context. So everything was in a single instance, and this single instance, of course, became a point of failure for any uh, additional use cases and applications. And when we talk about Jenkins stability, it's mostly about Jenkins controller, because it crashes, it needs uh, one terabyte of memory to process your coverage report, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So depending on the use case, depending on the imports, uh, you would experience uh, different issues that normally in a cloud native tool wouldn't happen. Because you have a container that processes a report, it crashes, okay, uh, we apply a failover and everything works again. But Jenkins became a single point of failure and this is not something we wanted. So for cloud native uh, special interest group, which was funded in 2018, the main objective was to actually uh, decouple and uh, re-architect Jenkins controller so that it actually become more suitable for running in cloud environments. It includes uh, not uh, just uh, having shared context or having a bunch of microservices instead of one, but actually having an approach that would be resilient, that would be highly available so that we could upgrade instances, uh, replace instances, which wasn't uh, possible in common Jenkins. And this group, uh, was around uh, for five years. Uh, at the moment, it's archived, but uh, uh, many of the results are there. And uh, other groups, like uh, Platform uh, Group, continues working in Jenkins. So in fact, uh, all the stories continue. Uh, what stories did we have in this group? Pluggable storage, Jenkins X, maybe some of you remember it, uh, configuration as code, uh, open telemetry integrations, cloud events, support for multi-tenant controller, etc., etc. So there were a lot of projects. Some of them succeeded, some of them not. And I would like uh, to just share key takes, takeaways from this project. So first of all is Jenkins X. So this project at the moment continues as a continuous delivery foundation project. Uh, it's a separate project with separate governance. Uh, there are still several contributors who keep pushing it forward. But initially it started as an experiment in Jenkins which tried to address uh, these uh, cloud uh, native Jenkins ideas. And uh, the idea was uh, to build a uh, quite opinionated solution that uh, would uh, provide out-of-the-box CI, CD for common uh, um, uh, application use cases. So there would be big old packs implementing continuous delivery, for example, for your Golang applications, for your Spring Boot applications in Java, and uh, any, uh, many such common technology stacks. Uh, there would be everything provided out of the box, uh, including support for staging environments, including integrations with ID, um, developer port portal integrations, and it would be a tool that would just work. Under the hood, uh, at the moment, it has three pipeline engines. Uh, there was quite a lot of drama around that because it started as basically just a classic Jenkins engine. In Jenkins 2, they removed it, uh, left only Tecton, and it didn't quite fly because while Tecton is awesome, uh, it didn't achieve any of expectations of Jenkins users who wanted to migrate and have some level of compatibility. So in Jenkins X3, they actually reverted it and uh, made uh, uh, Jenkins pipeline, well, uh, Jenkins X pipeline engines pluggable. And at the moment, three engines are supported. Classic Jenkins, Jenkins File Runner, and also Tipton that you can use. And uh, if you want to connect something else like Argo pipelines or Dagger, you can also connect it there. It's just a small matter of programming. The problem for us, while Jenkins X didn't fly, there were a lot of problems, but uh, the key problem from the Jenkins community that it was too opinionated. 
And the reality was that many of people were excited uh, about uh, Jenkins X. So we have Mauricio in this room, a few other people who actually contributed to this and pushed it forward. And it was quite successful in the cloud native space and use cases. But at the moment, it didn't address the use cases of 98% of Jenkins users. And basically, this is why it was rejected as not a Jenkins replacement. It still continues, but for us, it didn't uh, quite work. Um, and uh, for me, the key problem was that yeah, Jen uh, Jenkins X wasn't actually a general purpose CI-CD engine. So it wasn't Jenkins, it wasn't framework. Uh, there are advantages, disadvantages, but for us, it wasn't a solution we wanted to get. So we had to, to continue the search. And uh, another thing in the Jenkins community was, OK, what if we just made Jenkins controller on demand? So instead of having this uh, big Jenkinstein who uh, provides uh, all the context, who runs continuously, who eats up all your memory, who needs, sometimes runs, needs to run on virtual machines, so what if we make it on demand? And there were a few examples how to we split it up to multiple microservices, etc. But another approach on the table was to actually, why do we even need a controller? Instead of that, we could just have a pipeline execution uh, engine that would be triggered on demand, that would execute pipeline, report all the results back, uh, and uh, no controller. After that, you connect it uh, to a, whatever hypervisor, uh, uh, for example, to pro, to GitHub actions, etc., and you can just use it as Jenkins. You can get quite a lot of Jenkins capabilities, but at the same time, there will be no permanent controller at all. And you would be able to package controller with all the plugins, et cetera, because for us it would be just a Docker image that you couldn't run anywhere. So this was Jenkins file runner. Mm. And yeah, uh, this project is available. Um, it keeps evolving. So it takes Jenkins file, your workspace, configuration files. Then the magic happens. It executes pipeline, and it returns the results to STD out, to workspace, or to external storage. So there are plugins like S3 artifact storage plugin, which you can embed into a Jenkins file runner, and then they get uploaded to your destination. Or the same way, if you want to use secrets, you don't have to store secrets in a Jenkins image itself. Instead of that, there is Kubernetes credentials plugin, which you also connect, and everything works out of the box. So this idea was quite good, but it also didn't fly. And why it didn't fly? Uh, because it wasn't Jenkins, again. Uh, for us, one of the issues was that it wasn't a CI CD solution on its own. It was just a pipeline engine. And there is a great difference between these parts because pipeline engine executes your workload. It uh, does something, it returns the results. But it has no reporting capabilities, it has no storage capabilities. It doesn't really have user authentication, authorization, integration with other tools. So you have to build everything around uh, this to get your CI CD system. And when you just change uh, the engine, yes, you can do that, but then you have to build all the harness, which um, can be done, but it takes a lot of time. Also, there was no web UI, there was no queue, and uh, there was no built throttling or whatever. So, and it was designed for a single container use. While there were opportunities to connect agents uh, uh, through Kubernetes plugin, et cetera, uh, this approach also didn't work. And one of the key reasons is that we had no foundations, like pluggable storage, that would actually allow to implement that in a Jenkins uh, compatible way. So at that time, for example, we had no way to uh, st store built uh, logs and built results somewhere outside Jenkins. You, we had to hack the file system. We didn't have uh, job storage, log storage, uh, fingerprints, etc. And uh, this story and many other stories basically killed the project because it became really impossible to implement all the things at the time when uh, this prototype was viable. So basically, it didn't uh, fly. And the main takeaway for you, if you really can see the moving your application, yeah, uh, don't forget uh, about uh, architecture depth you accumulated because then at some point it uh, I uh, will uh, come back. Another project we had is Jenkins Operator. Uh, who has ever tried it? No, nobody. Uh, but yeah, Jenkins Operator was a project uh, started initially by the Virtual Lab. It's a, a company in Poland. They created a service for Microsoft Azure that would be Jenkins SaaS. 
Um, uh, this is just a concept of how you could use it, but actually this is a iterator that provisions your controllers based on a bunch of YAML file and CRDs. So no, uh, nothing really specific in the cloud native environment, and then everything should somehow uh, connect there. This approach worked actually quite well, uh, but uh, there were some issues that didn't let it uh, to succeed. Firstly, there were two operators, one for, by VirtualShlab, another one for, by Red Hat, and uh, these operators competed uh, with each other, and we were too late to introduce community governance and get everything, uh, uh, everyone working together. So by the time we started doing on that, uh, none of initial contributors were actually interested in that. So basically the project got stale. And at the same time, Jenkins core uh, vendor companies, uh, they also didn't invest in that because we were doing Jenkins X and other stuff, and basically we had a few engineers working on Jenkins at the time, which created quite a lot of issues. So again, architecture killed it, and also investment of, uh, of resources. Another thing that we saw there is that basically you don't have to scale to zero because it's actually a better approach. In a CI CD system, which continues working all the time, it always receives some events, it always has some users hitting uh, endpoints, accessing storage, etc. It doesn't really work to scale your instance to zero. Scaling to one, scaling to something small makes sense, but to zero, no. And when you put effort in that, most likely this effort won't pay off because a lot of architecture complications, to have a watcher, to recover all the APIs, to provision, but in the end, it doesn't need. So uh, we tried a lot of projects, and these projects didn't work as expected, and by now we don't have Jenkins successor, and voila, in 2024, Jenkins installation numbers keep growing, and Jenkins keeps holding more than 50% of the CI space. And uh, with all the improvements we do in architecture and developer experience, etc., it's actually quite reasonable. What I want to say, did we fail? Actually, no, uh, but we didn't succeed either because none of Jenkins replacement and cloud native was successful. And my key takeaway, it's your users don't actually care about infrastructure. So if you try to sell cloud native to your users, you will fail. Instead of that, you actually need to say benefits and what they need. For most of the cases, they just need green check boxes and they do not care from where it comes. Uh, and uh, developers is what you have to focus on, so no, uh, uh, same as everything else. Oh, yep. And uh, they don't have all these house of cards. They need something stable. Uh, they just use it. They don't want to do platform engineering at all. Uh, we talk about platform engineering. We have a lot of professional deformation, but our users don't care about that. They just need green checks. So. If you can build something that is friendly to your users' cloud native environments, uh, then uh, it should work for you. And uh, for our takeaway, so it's not being cloud native, it's being cloud friendly. So scales is needed, best for your needs, and easy to develop and maintain. So this is what I perceive as Jenkins, and this is actually quite a lot that's happening at the moment. So you can uh, check out in the new developments, like high availability uh, uh, Jenkins announced by CloudBees, which is actually based on uh, quite a lot of multi-tenant approaches, et cetera. So if you're interested, uh, chat to me after the presentation, um, and uh, I'm happy to discuss that. And yeah, all the interoperability is what you need for your project. Because instead of creating a lot of stuff, do generation five and do a lot of integrations. So in Jenkins, like open telemetry, cloud events, Tecton plugin, et cetera, et cetera. So there is quite a lot of stuff that is ready and quite a lot of stuff that you can check out. And in your projects, this is also something I would highly recommend to do uh, if you develop a new service. Do not waste time in creating functionality that is already available in the cloud native ecosystem. Instead of that, uh, join uh, existing uh, CX like open telemetry, et cetera, and uh, work on integrations uh, with other tools. And Basically, yes, this is what I wanted to say. So do be cloud friendly, don't care about scalability, focus on developer experience, and yes, pay your architecture debts like Lannisters. That's it, and of course, it's always a great time to contribute to any project. Any questions? Yeah, thanks, mm -hmm. Oleg. Mm -hmm. mm. Do we have any questions, or is everybody so hungry and wants to leave for lunch? Mm -hmm. 
if no question, then I want just to backtrack on one thing you said, yep. our customers don't care, and this is really true. They just want that it works. Mm -hmm. They don't give you props. How sophisticated you did, so completely agree on this one. So, last chance. If not, then thanks, Oleg. And mm -hmm. uh, for everybody else, have a nice dinner, and we see each other, I think, around two or so for the next second part of Rejects. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, and bon appétit. <laughs>